What's good, YouTube? What's good, YouTube? What's good, YouTube? Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be talking about this the Mega Square 3 Gold Box ECU for the Z31. Let's get it. What's good, y'all? Welcome to today's video. I go by the name of K9, and if this is your first time here, I hope you consider subscribing because on this channel, we like to keep it 300 like my ZX. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Mega Square 3 Gold Box kit that you can purchase through Hamilton on Facebook. Hamilton is run by Felix Hamilton, who happens to be someone who's very involved with the Z31 community. I'll be going over what this kit consists of, as well as what you can expect if you plan to install this on your Z31. Let's go ahead and open the box and go ahead and go over everything that we're going to talk about today. Alright y'all, here you can see I have everything laid out. Here the harness takes up majority of, of everything you can see. You get a relay block as well, and I'm going to go over all this stuff individually, um, but I think we should start here at the sensors and I'll work on my way back to the harness. So let's go ahead and start with this. What is Mega Square 3 and why would you want to use it? MS3 is an engine management system that has standalone capabilities. This basically allows you not only the ability to tune your car, but you can even add ECU controlled options like boost control, traction control, anti-lag, just for examples. This kit I purchased, again, was through Hamilton on Facebook, so I will throw it in the description for the video, a quick link, so all you have to do is log into your Facebook to contact him. One thing I like about this kit is the fact that it's basically plug and play give or take besides a few wires you're gonna have to connect if you wanna integrate like your stock dash, for example. The reason why I personally went with this MS3 kit, not, aside from the fact that it's plug and play, is because I do have Miztune on my car now. I haven't had the best experience, which I'm gonna make a whole nother video talking about that with. Um, but I love the fact that this is using new modern sensors and it's, it's just all new equipment instead of relying on the 30 year old harness of a Z31 that it's gonna naturally have. So now that we have that brief understanding of what Mega Squirt is gonna do for us, let's go ahead and check out the sensors next. All right, you guys, so first we're gonna be talking about this, the Mac valve. So basically what a Mac valve is, it's an electronic solenoid that's gonna allow you to control boost via your ECU to your wastegate so that way you can actually control boost the really cool thing about this it can actually hold up to 125 psi so for high boost applications you can use this which is really cool so the mac valve operates on a frequency of 19.5 to 40 hertz the other cool thing about this this also allows you to use features like boost bike gear with your new ecu as well also inside the box for the mac valve you do get these three fittings too that you're going to use for your vacuum ports Next up, we got the throttle position sensor, also known as the TPS. Basically what this does, this just measures your throttle input and lets your uh, ECU know what's going on so it knows how much fuel to deliver to your motor. All right, y'all, next up is the AEM 3.5 bar map sensor. There's the part number for you, just so you guys can see. So this is gonna be getting put inside the intake plenum. Um, this measures the pressure or vacuum inside the plenum. And I'm gonna actually show you guys in an upcoming video how this is gonna work too, don't worry. You guys are gonna like it. By the way, this is rated for about 50 PSIA. If I can get it on there. All right, y'all, next up, we got the coolant sensor. Now this is what's gonna be used to measure our coolant temps and temperatures for the car. Um, Z31 specifically, this is going to be replacing our cylinder head temperature sensor, the CHTS, which normally sits in the driver's side block. Um, I believe Felix said you can also relocate this and put this in the limb and um, use it as a wet sensor too. 
Setting All right, y'all, next up, we got the intake air temperature sensor, also known as an IAT. This is gonna be actually mounted pre-throttle body inside the intake piping. Um, this is gonna measure the air. This is for a forced induction vehicle specifically. All right, y'all, so for the next part of this kit, before we move on to the harness itself, is this crank angle sensor. Now this is specifically for the L28 ET, but um, it also is for the VG30 ET as well. Now this is gonna replace the low resolution Nissan trigger wheel with the high end one. And this one is also 24 to two, which is really cool too. So it's higher resolution. Um, I am gonna be keeping my car uh, on the distributor system for right now. Um, but as you guys will see on the harness when we get to that part, my harness is already set up for coils uh, given when I, when and if I choose to go that route. All right, you guys, here you can see we have a bunch of wires and what these are, are extra inputs you can input into your ECU. Things like nitrous, two-step, things of that nature. You guys can already see on screen, I'm compiling a whole list of what these are and they are color coded too. So I'm gonna put them here. Go ahead and pause the video, take a screenshot or just pause, uh, take a photo with your phone. So with that being said, some of these wires that I am going to be taking out and I'm going to show you guys how to actually pin these and put these into the harness even though it is already pre-wired pre for us. I'll show you guys that in the next part of the video. Alright you guys, so what we have here, I have the whole harness laid out here on my bed. And what I did too is I basically plugged in all the sensors and everything so you guys can uh, basically already get an idea of how this is going to work when it's actually in your car before we actually get to that step. So here you got the ECU. These are the two plugs that go into it. And this is also where, as you can see like this, you have some extra wire, wires bundled up. This is like for the fuel pump, O2 sensor. I mean, you're gonna have to actually hook these up to the car. And also I believe these are what integrate into your dash if you want that to work as well. Moving forward, this is, uh, I believe this was for the coolant. Yeah, this is a coolant, um, coolant wire for your gauge. This, this actually runs, I'll show you guys that runs down on a spade that goes to your OEM connector if you plan on using it. Coming down, here you have the TPS connected. These right here, I believe, were, uh, this is for the distributor actually. This is for your distributor. So like I said, I am still using distributor. He, come, he wires that in. That's gonna plug right in, which is nice. And then here, as you can see, we move down this way. I have the, the IAT sensor hooked up right here. Then we have the Mac valve. The Mac valve is gonna be hooked up to this relay system. Um, this has some fuses already in it. This is really nice, already wired up. Um, one of these you put to the your battery as um, to the battery power, and the other is a 12 volt switch. And I believe that's what he wires this up so you can hook the Mac valve directly to this in the car, which is really cool. This is the map sensor. Again, this is gonna be going inside our plenum. Uh, you'll be seeing that in another video, how I'm gonna be doing that. Here are your injector wires. Um, that's pretty straightforward. This is the coolant wire. So as you notice, this is a spade terminal. So this will go into your stock coolant, um, where your stock coolant goes. So you can hook this up and uh, integrate it with your dash stuff too. And then you have your grounds. These are supposed to be going to, I believe the heads or intakes too for these grounds. And then you have your coolant temp sensor, which also you do get that fitting on there, that crush washer, so. And that's how that looks. Pretty cool, right? Now, hey, look, I know you guys think this might be all a little intimidating because even for me at first, when I first kind of received everything and started reading into it, I was too. The great thing is this, you're probably wondering how can you make sure you track everything and really check everything that's on your harness? Well, the cool thing is this, Felix actually hooks you up with this really cool um, thumbnail. And what this is gonna have is your base tune for your car after you tell him what you're gonna do with it. And it's also gonna include a bunch of guides guides on mega squared um, tuner studio which is the program you do need to buy and you do have to buy it um, in order to tune your car and get it working um, but it comes with a lot of files and help so it's really cool and as long as you read through it you guys I promise you guys will be fine if you read it to be honest just make sure you read everything thoroughly don't rush one thing too whenever you're doing any sort of work to your car you should always pre-plan as early as possible you don't ever want to really rush anything that's usually how mistakes happen and nobody likes to make mistakes on purpose right that's what I thought. All right, y'all. Next up, I'm going to show you guys how to take these wires and put them into the ECU. So let's get that going. All right, you guys. So to open these connectors, what you want to do is get a flathead and in between this gray and red part, you want to just simply put it in here and give it a little twist. You'll see it raises. There you go. Just like that. And do it on the other side. 
do it gently. You don't want to break anything or gouge into this too far. And that'll allow you to actually go ahead and put new pins back here. And this is also numbered too. We are going to be putting pins into this great connector. As you can see here, this is the install guide. I just have it pulled up on my phone. We're going to be working on the great connector. Now for this demonstration, I'm just going to be installing the two-step line. And what you're going to want to do is look on here for two-step, which is pin number nine. If we look in here, which is numbered through the top, you can see there's no number nine. So we're going to go ahead and put that into number nine. And there you go. Once you put it in, you'll hear it click. All right, you guys went ahead and got that in, got these two purple wires in, one's flex fuel, the other's for two step. So again, if you guys choose to order this, lay out your harness, do all this before you actually get it, you know, into your car right away. If you choose to do it yourself, it's always good to pre-plan and kind of get an idea for how things are going to run and future plan, you know, anything else you might want to add. All right, y'all. So that's everything wrapped up with the harness. I'm going to go ahead and keep a link below where you guys can contact Hamilton yourself. And like I said, message him, get your own harness if this is the route you want to go. I am going to be showing you guys an install video once I get around to doing that. It is going to be very soon, hopefully in the next couple weeks. And I'll be going ahead and documenting that for you guys too and letting you know how that goes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for spending some time watching. I hope that you even learned something today. And as always, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you guys keep it 300. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Just